Welcome to worship this morning. It is a joy to have all of you here on this third Sunday of Advent, if you can believe it. Christmas is day and Christmas Eve are just a few short days away, it seems like. So as part of that that time of the season when we are preparing for the arrival, not only to celebrate the arrival of Jesus as a baby again, but the arrival of Jesus with his second coming, we have a couple of special things going on this week. The first thing is for this evening. At 6.30, we will have our quiet Christmas service. So for those who maybe just need a time of peace um, and to breathe in and to breathe out and to kind of just focus on, on the birth of Jesus without all of the chaos because things are going on in your life, you are welcome to come this evening at 6.30. And then, if you want chaos, I invite you, even if you don't want chaos, but you want to see a bunch of cute kids, I invite you to come on Wednesday evening. We will be having our His Name is Jesus Christmas program for Dog Night. And I know we've seen some great Christmas programs at school. We have more to come this week, but this one will also be special as, again, we focus on the name that they give our Savior, and the kids will be singing, and bells will be ringing, and we have skits, and at 5.30 we have supper. So if you want to come for supper, or just come for the program at 6, I invite you to do so, and to kind of see what we've been up to at Dog Night. You have to experience it once in your life, okay? And if not this week, I invite you to come another week, and to see this great ministry that this congregation is sponsoring. We have a few ornaments left on our angel tree, and I know our mission committee will be shopping this week so that we can get those turned in um, before the school year gets out here. So we have to turn them in this week. Um, if shopping's not your thing and you want to give, to give to our mission of the month, that money will go to be purchasing items for children here, right here in Hermosa, as well as those at the Arise Center with uh, Lutheran Social Services. So thank you for your generosity and helping making Christmas special for a lot of families this year. And thank you for your support of the food bank um, this past week as our 4-H kiddos um, collected food donations to help out the food bank. There's lots more in your bulletin. We keep uh, Jeanette Van Driesen and family in prayers as we will um, have Larry's funeral tomorrow at 11 o'clock here at the church with lunch to follow. And then on Friday at 10 o'clock, um, the other half of the family will be at Lake Campbell Lutheran Church in rural Volga, South Dakota, um, to do a service there. I'll be doing a service there, and Larry will be buried at Lake Campbell Cemetery. You can come on up, Emmett. It's fine. I got no problem. <laughs> With that being said, let's take a moment to breathe in and breathe out and just welcome the Holy Spirit to worship. rise as you're able. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The sun of righteousness will shall rise. With healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. We proclaim the praises of heaven. Who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Today, we light three candles in the Advent wreath. And our third candle, 
We light with praise to God who is a light unto our path. We light the healing light candle with praise to Jesus. We sing together hymn number 249. Merciful God, you sent John the Baptist to be a burning and shining light. Far too often we fail to reflect your burning light. Forgive us, Father. Then our thoughts become selfish and our judgment sinful. Forgive us, Father. For too often we fail to shine with your marvelous light. Our minds become darkened and our motives deceitful. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Though God sees all of your sin, he also sees Jesus, who was born for you, suffered for you, died for you, and lives for you. In Christ's name, you are absolved, forgiven, and cleansed in his blood. Arise, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Let us pray. God, our Father, we stand with believers in every age who have insisted, even in perilous times, that the baptized are secured in Jesus. His reign is just, his power is mighty, his love is endless, and he is coming soon as our son of righteousness. With healing in his wings, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Our first scripture reading comes from Malachi chapter 4 and the verses 1 through 6. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with the healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. You shall tread down the wicked. 
for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel? Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now our second reading comes from Second Peter in chapter 1. Verses 16 through 19. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses to, of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majesty glory, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice, voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the dawn till the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing together, rejoice, rejoice, believers, verse one. from John the fifth chapter beginning with the 30th verse and here we see Jesus not only testifying to his authority but witnessing to that as well <coughs> Jesus says I can do nothing on my own as I hear I judge and my judgment is just because I seek to do not my own but the will of him who sent me if I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp. And you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony that is greater than John's. The works of the Father have given me to complete. The very works that I am doing testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. The word of the Lord. And we have a couple of little ones here today, so I'd like to invite them forward at this time for a children's message. You want verse four? Oh yeah, let's read verse, sing verse four as they come forward.
here I come. I had to go get something from my office. What is that? Is that a baby? Yeah. Do you have any babies at your house? Do you have any babies at your house? I don't know, Pastor Deb. You're kind of strange. Does a baby have hands like you do? Do you have hands? Again, you're strange, Pastor Deb, and there's candy there. How about a tongue? Do you have a tongue? Where's your tongue? How about your eyes? And your nose? We have lots of things. Those are called senses. And we can touch things like the baby. And we can hear things with our ears, right? Yeah, you can touch the baby. We can hear things with our ears. We can taste things like fruit snacks with our mouths. Yeah. We can smell things like Christmas trees with our noses. Did you know when baby Jesus was born, baby Jesus could do all those things too? That's pretty cool, isn't it? He was a baby like you and me, and he had all those wonderful senses. And then he died, but when he rose again, he had all those wonderful senses again. I know, we got to close that baby. I would agree. Right? That baby needs some clothes. Yes. So I think today we should give thanks to God who is our light, right? For all the senses we have this Advent season and all the wonderful things we can do. That is the baby, isn't it? Yes, good job. Should we say a prayer? Can you, can you put your hands together? Okay, say, thank you God for our senses. Help us to experience you through them and to experience the season through them. Amen. 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 All right. How about, can Grandpa, can he have one? Sure. What would you like him to have? Listen. Fruit snacks? Okay. Yeah. How about you? Do you like fruit snacks too? There you go. <laughs> Should Grandma and Grandpa get one too? Yeah, there you go. There's one for Grandma because she came with, unless Grandpa would rather have Smarties. No fruit snacks are okay? How about, Gra would Grandma rather have Smarties? No. No, we're good? Okay. Well, thank you for coming up and helping me out today. Okay, would you like to hold the baby for the rest of church? Would you like to hold the baby? Should I get you a baby too? You just going to sit up here and talk with me for a while? Okay. We're going to give the sermon? Fabulous. We'll go for that. You have a, I'll see you later, okay? Thanks for helping me out. Something to pay attention to this week is the fact that you have all these wonderful senses that God gave you and that Jesus was born as a baby with those senses. So how can you use those this week to experience this season of Advent? Something to keep in mind and pay attention to. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and from Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Amen. Here's your quiz for the day. I forgot my little Advent card. Sorry, it's on my desk. So I have another one for you. Yesterday, hey Jude, twist and shout. We all live in a yellow submarine. Good, some of you even sing it. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Sound familiar? In spite of the DECA Recording Company telling them in 1964 that, quote unquote, groups with guitars are on their way out. John, Paul, George, and Ringo went on to change a generation. And one more song to the best of the Beatles would be, Here Comes the Sun. First came out on, Ab on their Abbey Road album. 
Here comes the sun. It might be spelled a little different, but the title remains the same. That's the theme of today's Old Testament lesson from Malachi. We don't talk about the Old Testament very much, so it's kind of fun to do that every once in a while. The focus for our Advent message is on the Savior's second coming, the grand finale of history, our final victory, and the marriage supper of the Lamb. Christ came to us in Bethlehem, and he will come to us again. And Malachi longed for the sun. We long for the sun on these dark winter days as the longest day of the season is still yet to come. Malachi lived during the dark days of the Persian domination over Judah in the mid-5th century. The darkness was all-encompassing. Malachi's contemporaries were saying, the Lord's table is com contemptible and it is vain to serve God. Those are very dark words. And at the root of all of this, we hear the expression from Malachi, where is the God of justice? We hear that cry today. People then and people now will say, God, you say that you will come and right all the wrongs, heal every hurt, vindicate your people and defeat every enemy. But none of this has happened. Evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. Overcome. With this kind of cynicism and sarcasm, our prayers don't deepen, our devotion doesn't increase, our zeal doesn't grow, and our generosity remains stagnant. And we cry out with God's people of old, where is the God of justice? So I read a story not long ago about a little five-year-old who was watching with fascination as his dad filled up the car with gasoline at the gas station. And so he gets home and he thinks he's going to be just like dad and he opens up the gas cab of the car and he goes and gets the garden hose and takes it over to put it in, puts it in the gas tank. And just at the last minute, the dad comes running out, screaming, stop, stop, stop. And the little one looks at dad and says, but I wanted to be just like you. The little one had a misconception of what kind of hose should go into the gas tank. Misconceptions can be humorous, they can be harmful, and some misconceptions can be fatal. And I think for us, it is a fatal misconception to think that Christ will never return and his promises are null and void, that there would be no final victory. It is a fatal misconception to say evil doers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. It is an evil misconception to keep a hold of that cynicism and that jadism that sometimes falls prey upon that and upon us. And why is that? Because Malachi says, here comes the sun. The sun will come because of God's overwhelming love for his people. They shall be mine, the Lord says, in the day when I act for my treasured possession. Today I proclaim that you are God's treasured possession. God's, one of God's most enduring terms for his people. Even though sometimes we don't feel very treasured and we don't feel very valuable, God says we are. God loves us so much that he calls us his treasured possessions. We are so valuable to God that his heart aches until the day when he will make all things new. He will perfectly restore us. He will rise up. Now, 
The Bible doesn't exactly tell us when that's going to happen, and we've talked about that before. But instead, we hold on to the promise that the future for all of us as believers will be glorious. How? Because here comes the sun. Malachi says, and I love this, but for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise up with healing in its wings. You shall go forth leaping like calves released from the stall. Is there much more joy to be found when those calves are let out and get to run around in the grass and the sun and they leap and they run and they bellow and they run and they jump and they leap some more and the pure joy that they show because here comes the sun. The sun of righteousness will bring him a new day. When every hint of darkness will be scattered, all gloom will be gone, and the night of terror and dread will be forever banished. On that day, our righteous standing by faith will become clear, just like the shining sun in all its brightness. The son of righteousness will also bring healing with his wings. He will restore everything we have lost. All the years of pain will be erased. Every tear of disappointment will be wiped away. All the symphonies we missed and the sunsets we didn't see will be beautifully played over and over again. There will be healing for people broken by divorce, by illness, by death, and by loss. In the twinkling of an eye, Jesus will erase our lifetime of hurt and pain and brokenness. We will see the Savior born in Bethlehem take up his cross for us. We will see the hands and the feet that took the nails, the head that was crowned with thorns. We will see the Savior once wrapped in swaddling clothes who left behind burial wrappings. When he rose from the dead, we will hear the words of welcome, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. All of this will be ours on that day and so much more because the son who once slept in a manger finished the work of salvation for us. Yes, there are times in our lives now when the sky is dark. As we look toward Good Friday, we see two criminals slowly dying, one on Jesus' right and one on Jesus' left. Jesus is in the middle, and he takes a deep breath, and in John speaks his last words, it is finished. And the veil of the temple is ripped Jesus' blood is poured out. The curse of sin is removed. The sacrifice is complete. Death is defeated and paradise is restored forever. Because the son of righteousness rose on the third day, he will come again with healing on his wings. And when the sun comes again, Malachi says, you shall go out leaping like calves released from the stall. What joy, what exuberance, what freedom. Critics have denied that Jesus will return. Cynics have laughed at the very idea of it. Others have tried to explain it away. The brightness and the best think that Jesus' return is a fairy tale or a legend or a myth. But we know better. The truth stands solid as a rock and soon will be that fulfilled. On that great day when Jesus comes, all the faithful will shout with joy and celebrate with joy when we shout together, Here comes the Son. Amen.
Please take your red hymnals and turn to hymn number 251. in trust and hope. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, Son of Righteousness, by your poverty we have become rich. By your act of grace we are filled. Jesus, a Son of Righteousness, help us to be a blessing to people who suffer in sickness, sadness, guilt, or need. We lift to you the farmers and ranchers who continue to try to bring in crops from the field and help their animals. We lift up to you those who find Christmas season difficult for whatever reason that might be. We pray for the health and healing of Wayne and Alyssa, for Randy and Rick, for Dixie and Felix, for Pastor Will and Virginia, for Brenda and Sheila, for Chick and Patty and Terry and Susan and Shell and Shelby and Blakeland and Denny and Mickey. Lord Jesus, empower us to be generous toward them. In our thoughts, words, and actions. Jesus, Son of Righteousness, you have filled our lives with your love and forgiveness. 
as your love overflows into our lives, help us to overflow with great mercy. Jesus, Son of Righteousness, we pray for those who live in fear or need. Bless them through our works of mercy as well through the works of our leaders, care providers, lawmakers, and those working to keep people safe. Help us in our words and actions to share your love with them with the generosity and great joy. Jesus, Son of Righteousness, Help us give freely to others what you have freely given us. The day is most certainly coming when you will come, Jesus, as, son, as the son of righteousness with healing in your wings. Be with those who now, God, are mourning the loss of loved ones and who are awaiting to be reunited with them. We lift up to you the family and friends of Larry and Joyce. Then we will go out and leave like calves to release from the cell. Then we will live to your glory and honor forevermore. Amen. We will gather our offering. Thank you for your generosity. to rise as you're able. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, for your creation has given for all, for the talents you are given to share, and for this bread and wine. Transform us to be the body of Christ and we remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
This meal has truly been prepared by Jesus Christ and all are welcome to come and taste and see that the Lord is good. We will do communion, um, continuous communion with one blessing at the end. Communion servers, please come forward. If I could have one more volunteer to hold the bowl, I would appreciate it.
blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Please rise as you're able. <laughs> the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this gift of life. Use this gift to strengthen us in our faith towards you and in our love towards others. God, allow us to use this gift to take your light, your healing light, out into the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The sun of righteousness shall rise with its healing wings. You shall go out leaping like from the stall. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forevermore. Amen. We leap like calves out into the world, singing joy to the world.